Hey, Wichita, we are back with another episode of Coffee Break. I am your host, Officer Chad Ditch. I'm your co-host, Officer Trevor Macy. And man, we are both with the Public Information Unit, and it has been a, an extremely busy weekend. It was uh, we for are back. you. Yeah, it was, yeah. Um, back here on a Monday after the weekend. As we say every week. <laughs> yeah, I see you're uh, growing, a little, growing a little beard, man. Yeah. Um, Preparing for the winter? Or? Growing the stash back out, but it always looks weird when I just grow the stash out. So I'm That's adding fair. a little little beardness to go with it, and then I'll shave that off and, and leave the stash. Gotcha, gotcha. So, yeah. So what did you it's do this time. weekend? Worked the Wind Surge games. Um, all of them? Yeah, all except, Damn. well, I worked everything last week except Thursday night. And then I worked Town East uh, Saturday. Man, you just been a busy, busy. part-time working guy. You were busy too. Yeah, I on was on call busy. this weekend. I was. Yeah, my uh, my mom came down. She wanted to see my her grandbabies before uh, before school started and stuff. So uh, we went to the Wind Surge game on Saturday. That yeah, was, I met your mom. Yeah, that was pretty dope. She was like, "Is that your co-host over there?" And I was like, "Yep." And so she said, "I want to meet him." Okay, let's go meet him, mom. So we met. It was glorious. Yeah, hope you guys had a fun time. We did, man. It was hot and muggy at first, but it was cool because they were giving out wind surge uh, steins and everything. Yeah, so. that was a cool night too because uh, we had uh, Stewie out there. Stewie was out there throwing the first pitch. Yeah, uh, well, Stewie didn't throw the yeah, pitch. Yeah, for all the haters, Officer yes. Larison <laughs> yeah. threw the first pitch. Stewie probably could have thrown the first pitch. I bet he could. Just so we're clear. He just gets a little camera shy yeah. uh, in front of the crowd there. Larison did a good job with the pitch. To me, you know, being a, a baseball player and a catcher at that, mm-hmm. she was a little outside, but it was pretty close. I mean, the way that, that ump did umpire that game, he might have called it a strike. It was so. the best because there were three pitches that yeah. game, three first pitches, and I think her, her pitch Hands was down. the best one Hands by down. far. And they had a Stewie baseball card. Yes. Which was pretty cool. So yeah. if anybody got uh, their hands on a Stewie baseball card, I think we got a photo of it. Um, I don't know. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Look at old Smiling Stuart. face. That's awesome. We are so proud of you, Stuart, and everything that you've that you've done in your uh, in your short time here at the department. Can't wait to see what what Stewie does. Right. You know, as a as a um, prior dog handler, when you have these big demonstrations and stuff like that with and in front of large crowds, you know what the number one thing that you're worried about. The dog pooping. The dog pooping in front of everybody. Front of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm, I'm sure that's how uh, Officer Larison was feeling. But yeah, he uh, he did probably good. just like walk him incessantly before and yeah, event, you probably just make, to make sure, sure he takes like, like four bathroom breaks before you go out like, there. Yeah, go, just go. Yep. Do not go in the stadium. Yeah. Although that would be hilarious. It if would he be had hilarious. Gone. Like, what would you do as a as the handler? I I would just. Drop the leash and walk away. No, see, like, I, I would probably like <laughs> cheer on the crowd or something like that, man. And just like, come on, let's put, give it up for Stewart. Yeah, so. that's funny. Oh, Stewie, what a guy. So the wife and I, we also <laughs> after uh, after the game, uh, we went and watched um, the Black Phone. With yeah, you tell me about that, bro. That's Had a good. Shook. It's a good movie. Um, very disturbing. Yes. Yeah, but it's it, it is a rated R film, and it's it's a it's a it's a. I, yeah, I don't think your kids film. to see that. Yeah, it's horror, but it's not like scary. It's just like creepy. Yeah, and suspenseful. Yes, and uh, yeah, it was definitely a solid watch. Yeah, definitely. I was impressed with it. Definitely, I man, enjoyed definitely. it. We had the uh, the uh, Broadway Corridor team golf tournament this weekend too, didn't we? Yes, man. Those guys did a phenomenal job. They had a lot of people uh, donate think they had over 80 players participate wow. in the event that's awesome um and they raised over ninety two hundred dollars uh to benefit the special olympics so Dang. that's dope man that's a, a a lot of people forget like when when people put on these events i mean they're doing this months in advance or right. going out reaching out to people looking for people to sponsor holes and donate and stuff so um, a lot of legwork went into that i'm sure from all those guys on the broadway corridor team so mm-hmm. um thank you to everybody that donated thank you to everybody that sponsored a hole and you'll see some cool photos up on our on our Facebook. Yeah. So. Speaking of donations, you're wearing a uh, a special shirt yes, today. Can I'm you talk a little bit about this shirt? Because it's it's uh, it really really bright. Well, yeah, you definitely need earplugs and everything because it's really <laughs> loud. Um, but I I chose to pick the color pink, man. I, I I'm a guy that likes to wear pink. Um, 
but no this shirt is uh for officer gum it's one of the shirts that uh that you could you could purchase yeah. um to help benefit him and his family um so we've got a link on our facebook page too yeah right? link so is on our facebook page shirts. it's pinned it's right up on top the benefit uh, dinner is this weekend mm-hmm. um so saturday it is saturday yeah this saturday so check that out. It's also it'll the link will take you to the um, Honors Adversus uh, Foundation, um, and that's where all the information is out there. So. What's the back look like? Um, well, I got a big back, bro. So I don't think they can they see all that. Okay. Yeah, we can see it. So we that's a it's it. a really got large bear because it's on me. But <laughs> um, we talked about the bear yeah. with uh, with. Uh, with Detective Steve, Gerald yeah. on, the, on the podcast a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, but the whole really shirt cool is shirt. designed. It was designed by his daughter and stuff. So very uh, cool, very cool, man. It, was, uh, it came in um, the end of last week, so I was like pfft, rocking it on the podcast, man. Heck yeah, man! So I'm excited, man. You gotta wear it on Wednesday too. Yeah, because we wear pink on Wednesday. On Wednesdays we wear pink, bro. I think I wore pink three days last week. Really? Oh so, yeah, I just, yeah, uh, pinks and blues. I kind of like up it. At the pink game. Yeah. I think I think one day I wore pink with my blue suit and I just looked like I was going to like a gender reveal party. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. They were giving me crap at the Comstack because of how, I how sharp. I've never I understood gender reveal parties. This is going to get probably some hate mail, mm-hmm. but like, do you really need to throw a party for that? I mean, some people get excited. What I don't like is some now people what they're doing is they're faking out the moms and dads um, of the gender reveal. Like they get done, they get to the end, and like a pink and a blue one comes out. So then the parents are like, "Am I having twins?" And then they're like, no, actually go to the kid, the other kid, you know, like big brother, or big sister. And then that one's like, that reveals it. Or there might be three or four steps on it and stuff. So. What in the world? Do you remember, was it a couple of years ago, somebody set a fire that burned like millions of because acres of and homes? It was a gender reveal and they used fireworks. It was out in, out in the desert somewhere. That. And it caused this massive wildfire. Jeez. And, uh, and I think they got charged. Really? Yeah. Because I mean, like, People lost their homes. That's like uh, it was unfortunate. intense. Like all because of a gender reveal party. Yeah. So people just keep it a. I like to see keep the, it simple. Yeah, but I do like seeing the ones that are like kind of catchy and everything. Like do something different. Um, well, Officer uh, or Detective Gerald did one where he pulled somebody over. Right. Yeah. That was. Yeah. Well, that wasn't that a gender was reveal. Cool. That was to let the guy know that he was going to be a dad. Okay. See that. So that's different. Yeah. That's different. Yeah. But then you have ones like um that are risky right where the one of the parents is like a softball player and the reveal is when the parent will hit the softball so they'll toss the softball up well now you're really hope that's two parts there right you got to hope the pitcher the person throwing the ball right. throws it accurately and then you really hope the person swinging the bat hits it right because when that thing hits the ground if you miss then that's kind of like just all your paint glitters all over yeah. the baseball field at that that's point it. I just I don't know that I would ever do a gender reveal party no. or anything. I just I go to the doctor and they'd be like, "Yeah, mm-hmm. here's what it is." I'm like, "Okay, cool." Text everybody I need to text. See, the last one, the last one I went to was a uh, oh, they had the uh cake pops, pink and blue, mm-hmm. right? But the interior would be opposite, I think, of the cake pop on the exterior, right? So if it was blue, it would be pink on the inside or whatever, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um so that was kind of cool, and I got the one that gave the revealed the gender. So that was pretty dope. But I, it. I got distracted there because I looking around the room and I see a silhouette of your pink shirt Isn't everywhere that I look. Like it's like burning <laughs> into my retinas. I didn't expect it to be this pink, but I love it, man. Yeah, I love it. It's so awesome. I did the same thing with uh, when we had shirts made for uh, Kyle last year. Mm. So you got, got a pink, pink one. I got a pink one there too. So. Very nice. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. Speaking no, of also, speaking also of very, very nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice uh, segue. Yeah, man. We have a very nice guest today. Yes, uh, Sergeant Brian Mock yeah. with the uh, WPD traffic section. He's going to come in and talk about some big, traffic stuff. Yeah, big uh, traffic guy. Yeah, he's been doing traffic like basically man, his yeah. whole career. So yeah. uh, we'll bring him in and see what he has to say. Yeah, and for uh, all, for real quick, I'm going to cut you off. But for cut ev- me off. Yeah, Chad, for everybody. Cut me off. That's always like um, in the comments or messaging us and stuff um, or commenting on Facebook about traffic stuff. Um, this is for you. This is for you. You will get some questions answered. You will um, learn about why certain things happen during traffic um, um, investigations. Investigations. Couldn't think of that word. My bad. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, well, uh, very, very knowledgeable guy on traffic. So, yeah, we'll get, um, we'll get a refill and we'll get him in here.
And we are back with Sergeant Brian Mock. How you doing today, sir? Pretty good. Appreciate you joining us. Know you're super busy. Yep. Everybody's always super busy, though. So, the, yeah. That's true. That's true. It's a busy department. So, and you're not going to hurt our feelings at all, but we ask this to every guest that we have. But uh, have you seen the podcast? I have watched a couple episodes. I haven't watched all of them. Hey, that's that's, that's better, better than, than most. none. Yeah. Better than yeah. none. <laughs> so, the podcast is set up basically so we can allow the community to get to know the officer, the supervisor as a person, as opposed right. to just the uh, the uniform. So, uh, tell us who's who's Brian Mock. Well. Um, I've been on the department about 24 years now, just oh, past wow. my 24th year. Um, done a variety of assignments, uh, obviously started in patrol where everyone does. Mm-hmm. Um, spent the majority of my time as an officer. I spent on nights, uh, probably did in total uh, 14 years or oh, so wow. working night shift. Um, and then I kind of, throughout my career, I've kind of specialized in traffic, not mm-hmm. necessarily the um, um, enforcement side, but more like the uh, investigation side. I got you. Uh, so I went to uh, some training to learn to be like an accident reconstructionist. So when there's a really bad accident, yeah, um, we'll have you know a trained team to go out and and work those cases because usually the the stakes, so to speak, are a little higher. Yeah. You get charged with a lot higher crimes mm-hmm. um, when when there's a uh, a fatal or a, a death involved in the yeah. traffic accident. So I did that as an officer for a little while, and then I became a detective. I worked in three different spots in the detective section, okay. um, our accident follow-up section, so the detectives that file those kinds of cases. Mm-hmm. Um, DV sex crime section and the gang unit were the three spots that okay. that, I, uh, that I've worked at. Um, and then I was promoted to sergeant, went out to the streets again, uh, worked afternoon shift this time, which, okay. was, a, which was a big change from, from nights because yeah. the sun's out and there's more a lot people more people out people. driving. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. So um, I did that for a couple of years and then I came back into the traffic world and now I supervise the detectives that are doing the job that, that I once did. Okay. Okay. Very cool. Is there, wh- what made you choose that? in your career as well, far as, as that um specific area i'm not really sure yeah because because <laughs> all through all through college and uh high school i mean i never did a lot of math and yeah. and physics and whatever i kind of took the basics you know mm-hmm. my degree my bachelor's degree is in criminal justice okay and so that required college algebra yeah and i waited mm-hmm. till my senior year to take that right, right? <laughs> so i never really saw myself as someone that would mess with like you know physics and trigonometry and mm-hmm. all these other things but um, you know, I started to work them. Uh, I had a friend that was working on the critical accident team and he talked me into coming in and, and working it with him. And mm-hmm. uh, I guess I kind of found a niche, not for everybody. There's a lot of math and, and physics and yeah. stuff involved with it, but I kind of found a niche and I just stuck with it. There you go. How long does it, does it take that process, um, from like getting the call out as a cat team person and then working through that to completing that, uh, that accident? How long does that take? Uh, it can be quite a while, depending on what what you um, how complex the case is. Mm-hmm. Um, so not every just because there's an accident where somebody is you know critically injured or 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 dies doesn't necessarily mean that's a criminal event. It could right. just be it could just be an accident, mm-hmm. um, and those those take a little bit less um, back end work for us. Um, but if we have one where you know somebody's intoxicated or impaired driving. Um, or there was some reckless driving or something like that that's going to raise those um, those charges up. Yeah. And, you know, conservatively, it can take us, you know, three to four months to do all the all the back end work, um, inspecting the vehicles, doing doing the the mathematics and stuff that we have to do with it, downloading the vehicles, all those kind of stuff. So, yeah. um, and my detectives do all of that on their own. Like we don't have a you know the lab, the CSIs don't come out and do that for us. Mm. So it's the detectives to do all of that oh, yeah. with. So. So I get a, I get a lot of questions from community members. Like, let's say you have a, the situation where it's a single vehicle accident. Person just uh, runs off the road. They're intoxicated. They hit a house. Not a whole lot of damage. I know hitting a house sounds like a whole lot of damage, but, you know, kind of just like kiss the house a little bit with their vehicle. Um, and then that person ends up not going to jail. Um, can you tell us why situations like that happen um, and maybe uh, put a little bit more perspective to it, I guess? Uh, well, so like we talked about earlier, sometimes a, an accident is just an accident, right? Like, so, you know, in the in the accident reconstruction world, we, we tend to refer to them as crashes or collisions yes. more often. Um, so, um, but sometimes truly a, a, a crash is just an accident, mm-hmm. right? There's no reckless um, conduct on somebody's part yeah. or there's no um, in impairment or, you know, something like that. And then we may just handle that as a normal 
um, traffic wreck, just like we would if you just rear-ended someone going yeah. out to the store or something, right? So um, but there should be, on, on wrecks, when somebody is found at fault, there always ought to be some sort of enforcement action. Right. That could just be a ticket. Yeah. Um, now, sometimes when it is a more critical accident, mm -hmm. um, that person may not go to jail that night, depending yeah. on the circumstances. Mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't mean that it's not getting handled on the back mm -hmm. end. So... Uh, you know, it's kind of it's kind of one of those things where if we book somebody in a jail, we're statutorily required to charge that case yeah. within a certain amount of time, right? And because there is so much technical work involved with with accident reconstruction, um, then that technical work we may not be able to do within the time frame yeah. of that of that statute statute or, or even like wait for like a blood a blood draw results right to come blood draw in. results um you know we do we do have the vehicles inspected by a certified mechanic that'll go to court and testify yeah. for us there's a lot of electronic data in the car that can be downloaded mm -hmm. um that we have to normally apply for search warrants to get yeah um there's other people to interview there's videos to collect there's just a lot of the back end work yeah um and a lot of times people that are involved in some of these critical wrecks they're not necessarily like a flight risk mm -hmm. or um you know, someone that's a, that's a posing an extreme danger to the public. Yeah. So it, we, we are able to take that time to make sure that we're doing the case correctly mm -hmm. in order to get it charged appropriately. I gotcha. Pretty what much. do you, what do you guys see over there is like the number one cause of wrecks in Wichita? So we're talking just regular wrecks or over or just well, let's All do regular over. wrecks and then, and then kind of your more serious ones, I guess, if, if okay. that's how you want to. So, the, so they will tell you, like, in, you know, you hear a lot of times that the number one cause of wrecks um, in Wichita or even in Kansas is inattentive driving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a catch-all right, um, right. thing. So um, that may or may not be true. Inattentive driving is kind of like, hey, you, you weren't paying attention and you had a wreck, right? right. Um, so, so certainly that causes wrecks. Um, but if you're looking for something more specific, um, are more more wrecks are caused by intersection violations like mm -hmm. running red light mm -hmm. or improper turns yeah um, those kinds of violations or excessive speed so everyone always asks what's excessive speed mean well that kind of depends on where you are right mm -hmm. so you're up on a highway 10 over isn't necessarily a excessive excessive yeah. but if right. you're in a school zone right. 10 over is excessive right or mm -hmm. in a neighborhood or something like that so Definitely. it's kind of dependent on where you are but everyone can agree like 100 miles an hour no matter where you are is yes, excessive right. right just so, a bit just a bit yeah. well yeah. not not on a daytona 500 track yeah that's, that's a little slow that is that, pretty slow but, yeah uh, and speaking yeah. of uh sorry to interrupt you speaking yeah. of uh of of wrecks and collisions um i know you know the traffic uh unit is always doing enforcement um, to try to to mitigate uh, collisions, people on Facebook always give us grief about mm -hmm. about the traffic unit mm -hmm. because they're road pirates or they're right. revenue right. Uh, generators. Can you talk about kind of the correlation between traffic enforcement and and car wrecks and okay. collisions? So, um, not not studies like through us or whatever, but just nationwide studies. You can get them through NHTSA or National Highway transportation safety mm -hmm. or or other places they will tell you that effective traffic enforcement does have a relation into stopping mm -hmm. or lowering wrecks and lowering critical and and fatal wrecks um so uh, what what the traffic unit tries to to focus on is dangerous driving habits mm -hmm. right so you'll hear people talk about well i got a ticket for doing four miles an hour over or something like that i don't think there's very many people that are actually getting a ticket for doing four miles yeah. an hour over but that's certainly not what we're focused in on yeah, right? right so the, the things we talked about intersection violations um impaired driving um you know excessive speed those kinds of things that we know that are factors in causing wrecks that's what we should be focused on mm, yeah so um you know it has far less to do with revenue generating mm -hmm. um but you know the government no matter what level you're talking about they have two ways of of you know correcting behavior right like mm -hmm. we can put you in jail or we can fine you yeah right yeah. and so nobody thinks that for going 10 over anybody needs to go to jail right for that yeah. right so so what's left to us yeah. fines Fine. mm -hmm. yeah. so so that's that's kind of the difference between you know it's not really revenue generating but that's our avenue to correct yeah. behavior. Yeah. You know, and I think it's a big psychological thing too, right? Like you, 
you can't go through Eastboro without knowing like, hey, I need to go 20 yeah. because it's been instilled in your brain that you can't speed through there. You can't go 25 there. Right. You're going to get pulled over. Right. It's the same thing if you're on Kellogg or on the eye. You shouldn't be speeding regardless. Right. Mm-hmm. But we know people are going to do it. But you get in certain areas of Kellogg or certain areas where you've been pulled over before, you know, like I need to watch out for the police because mm-hmm. they're going to be running radar. Mm-hmm. But that's a way for you to enforce that even when you're not there because mm-hmm. people will slow down and everything like that. But um, what do you say to the ones that um, get upset at uh, the motor unit that's sitting on the sidewalk running radar? So our motors have to be safe where they're enforcing traffic, mm-hmm. right? right? So, um, you know, we're, we're allowed to sit in places. Like we can sit in a no parking zone to enforce traffic yeah. or something mm-hmm. like that, right? Or we can sit... Um, you know, on the shoulder of a roadway where you're not supposed to leave your car to enforce traffic, mm-hmm. right? So, so now if you see a motorcycle just parked on the sidewalk for no reason, then that's one thing. But most of the time, those guys are are there because they're trying to enforce a traffic yeah. violation, and that's the safest, most effective yeah. place for them to be, right? And we're not we're not doing we're not doing damage to the sidewalk. We're not driving down the sidewalk mm-hmm. except for the short amount of time that it needs you need to get there. Yeah. Um, so. You know, it's, it's just, you know, sometimes like when I was a night shift officer, I'd be pulling up to a call that I knew was, you know, active or something was going yeah. on and I didn't want to see someone approach me. So I turn off my headlights. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's kind of the same thing. Right. Mm-hmm. So. So, you know, you're 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 trying to, to they're trying to do their job as safely as possible. And sometimes that does mean sitting on sidewalks or up on a yeah. median or something like that. You know, so you go to Kellogg and Broadway, which is one of our high accident intersections. Mm-hmm. Well, to watch those lights, we're not going to sit in traffic where they're likely to get hit or be right. or be in and, you know, impede the traffic coming through there. Mm-hmm. So they're left with park up on the median or park over here on, yeah. The, yeah. on the sidewalk. So, yeah, safer for everybody if we're just out of the way and still trying to do the yeah, job absolutely. i always wonder when people comment things like that like what do they want yeah. them to do do they want them to sit in the road with their lights on mm-hmm. blocking a lane of traffic right. to the to run yeah. which isn't safe something. for us or safe for them because right. yeah. then yeah. you're causing traffic back up too so yeah right absolutely and you kind of uh taken over a little bit of, of the facebook as well regarding traffic so you were one of the ones or you were the one i should say that posted the um the lidar results right, right. with all the guns yep. of everybody going 90 plus on kellogg and everything yep. That was um, yeah. a great post because it shows attention. everybody in the community like, hey, this is what traffic is enforcing. Mm-hmm. And this is actually what people are doing on Kellogg because people see it. You know, you can't right. be on Kellogg mm-hmm. and see somebody speeding through. So I thought that had a, a great um, reaction from the community. A lot of them were positive and everything. You had mm-hmm. some you said some people that were hating and everything. It's always <laughs> those <laughs> salty people. Yeah, but There's somebody that, that commented about them not cleaning their radar screens. Yeah, too, right. right. Like they. <laughs> yeah. They had some, they had some dust and whatever mm-hmm. on them. But you know, the the thing with those that post was that that was all collected. I just came up with the idea. I told them to send me some, yeah, some pictures. Those were all collected within a week. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that wasn't something that I had to search back, you know, a year to yeah. find. That was all collected within a week. You know, if we if we wanted to do, you know, something where I said collect for the month and we can post the highs for the month. Yeah. We, we would have it's, even more of those. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. We'll and then should start posting. The- that every once in a while yeah and i think you guys have one coming up uh august 30th uh gonna be at kellogg and rock Mm -hmm. enforcing um the same thing as far as running stoplights and watching intersections Mm -hmm. and stuff too so if you're listening or watching Mm -hmm. you better put that on your calendar morning i bet we still get the same kind of numbers right and so you know those when we do those when we do those enforcements at like kellogg and rock or we just recently did one uh up and down broadway not too long ago um, we're, we're in places that we know we have traffic issues, mm-hmm. right? So Kellogg and Rock, to no one's surprise, is a high accident location, yeah. right? A lot of traffic, um, a lot of accidents that mm-hmm. happen there. And, you know, we know through research and through our own data collection that, that that's caused by signal violations and, yeah. and proper turns and things like that. So so we're not just dis- indiscriminately picking out locations to go and, and yeah. enforce this at. We're, we're targeting the areas that we know we're having problems right. with. Right. So. And that's, that's awesome because there's... Well, there was you posted uh what well, there's four major intersections where there's problems i think some were kellogg and seneca kellogg and broadway kellogg and rock and i think maybe it's 21st and woodlawn yeah right? so i picked one out of the each of the four bureaus mm-hmm. the top one in each of the four there bureaus that's right that's, that's what right. i did yeah so one thing i always forget when i'm on the podcast i remember afterwards i should say is that um people i live downtown right now while we're building a house and everything mm-hmm. and people always forget that if you're on a one way you can make a left hand turn on a red right. Onto another run, yeah. Or, or yeah. One, one way, one way to one way. You yeah, can. yeah, yeah. That gets me every time. I'll be like, "Hey, man, you can go. Yeah. You can go." A right. lot of people. I think 
just in general, people don't have a lot of experience with one way yeah. roads and then you get thrown into downtown Wichita where it's like every other street is yeah. one yeah. way. Cause I, I grew up in a small town and coming to Wichita, it was so confusing to me at mm-hmm. first yeah. when I encountered these one way streets. I used to joke about that, that, you know, you got the, the county designation up in the on the top left of your tag mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. says Sedgwick County or whatever county you're from. Yeah, yeah. I always thought that you ought to have certain counties where we don't have one way streets or not very much population. We ought to ban them from driving on one way streets. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. Like yeah. so you, you have to have a Metro tag in order to navigate downtown Wichita. Or right. Something. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah. you have, you guys have, cause I, I get like a little, like a mild case of road rage every once in a while when I see mm. certain things happen on, on the, on the highway. Do you guys have, traffic pet peeves that you were willing to share oh mine is uh biggest thing for the and i'll I'll say for wichita is if you're eastbound on kellogg um from the eye and you come up to that grove hillside where everybody's coming on everybody's getting off everybody always goes like 40 miles an hour when they're coming from grove going on to eastbound kellogg and it just makes a big traffic jam right there and i'm like guys let's let's speed up there's this whole zipper effect where everybody comes right, in. Yeah. Moves zipper out. merging. If everybody knew how to zipper merge, yeah. the world would be a better See, place. See, that's what I was going to bring up, too, because like, it's going to be controversial because people don't like it. And they always want them to get over into the lane as soon as they see a road closed sign. Yeah. But the traffic engineers design that so that people can go all the way up to what they call the choke point, which yes. is where the lane is shut down, and zipper merge in. And they, yeah. are, they, know, that's, they know that's faster yeah. uh-huh. than just everybody lining up in one lane and having one big long and trying to block right. the person that's coming up on the other lane. So. so so fun fact, I, um, when I used to work out at East CP, I, I lived in Hayesville and I would come in through on the eye and they were working on that um, part of the highway right there. That's just uh, west of um, basically uh, Pawnee or the old. What's the old? Oh, my gosh. Drawing a blank. The old roller coaster stuff that we had here. Oh, Joyland. Joyland. Joyland right next to Joyland. They're working on that bridge. So it would be one lane mm-hmm. and traffic would be one lane all the way back to da- darn near uh, hydraulic. And I'm like, guys, we we use these two lanes until we get now like you said near the choke point but you would have people that would like purposely move over to the left lane so i could not pass it. yeah mm-hmm. man that i'm like hey you yeah, guys need to learn like, the rules yeah, they just don't want to get along yeah. on the road it's yeah. like we lose our our sense of uh humanity yeah. when we're when we're in or a they car wait in line highway. wait in line like i did well seems like seems like road rage is getting worse and worse though doesn't it yeah like so. yeah so it seems like people are just more impatient mm-hmm. as a whole yeah but it's a it's a smartphone that's mm-hmm. what it is yeah that's what it is well, it's, TikTok. it's that right darn now. yeah tiktok it's the tiktok that's <laughs> the tickety talk <laughs> uh so captain nicholson your boss he said that you have knock knock jokes no uh, but he said you he said you were he said you're pretty good but they're not really knock knock jokes i just okay. tell i just tell I kind of tell dad jokes, but see, you didn't give me a heads up, so I don't know that I have one. Oh, uh, okay. Right away, right? That's like, my so. bad. That's my bad. I have them, like, just right there, ready to go all the time, just, Chad. Well, yeah. you know, Cap made it seem like like you were just going around telling jokes every now and again, so I figured, oh, like... But I have a source material, right? Like, uh, so, like, when I was a Patrol South uh, supervisor, mm-hmm. I would tell jokes before squad, or sometimes we do trivia, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, because, you know, everyone has access to the inner watch now, which, yeah. you know, so... So people can read the inner watch and whatnot, mm-hmm. and, and we talk about whatever we need to talk about, and then we'd end, you know, with a trivia, with a, with a trivia or something. Yeah, right? and you I used do to, inner watch trivia. Or no, no, like, like just like general trivia. Okay. Like so, sometimes it would be, a lot of times it was sports related. You know, oh, okay. but, uh, just because it's easy to find, and I think a lot of people can answer it at least in our profession. Um, but I really I did a world geography trivia one time, and that didn't. That didn't go over. That didn't go well. so well. Yeah, yeah that catch yeah. on. That does remind me, though. You know what the, you know what the best part about the Switzerland flag is? What? I don't know, but it's a giant plus. It's <laughs> a big plus. I knew <laughs> where he was going with that. All right. Do well, you ever do Star Wars trivia down south? Oh my gosh! Because Chad would have lost that. Yeah. I'd, I'd, yeah, I'd never did. But if I'd known that he was a Star Wars hater, I would have brought in some Star Wars trivia. See, you know? I'm a big hater. That's why we can't have a Lieutenant Lang because he he's got a uh, I don't even know it's a helmet. It's a stormtrooper yeah. helmet, yeah, Chad. There you go. <laughs> he's got that, and he's got a whole full blown Mandalorian. Yeah, I heard he's got a Mandalorian. Too. Yeah. Costa, when you get him on the podcast, dressed so. like that, dressed like that, yeah, he could do for so the you first be like, half. Oh, what are you wearing? <laughs> Was this some sort of space costume? That's when he transferred from south to west. His last night there, he came dressed in, came to the squad dressed as the Mandalorian. Really? 
had a whole soundtrack as he walked in the room and everything. That's right? hilarious. amazing. Yeah, That's I hilarious. guarantee you, you could probably get him to come in here. And I'm just jealous. Like yes. I don't really want a Mandalorian. Costume. I don't think Tyler would allow it. Our producer, because he's a, <laughs> he's a big Star Wars hater too. So get a new producer that day. Yeah, love Nolan do it. Well, we also play a game on this podcast, and, and Trevor got it to the other day, so I'll let him go with the spiel of, of the one has to go. So we play a game called One Has to Go. I already said that. And uh, <laughs> you just said <laughs> we play a game, and I'm going to take over. Good. So we'll put we'll put the items up on the screen. So there's four items uh, that you have to you have to choose. One of them goes away forever. So this is today is National Relaxation Day. If you didn't know that. So I picked four um, relaxing activities, uh, okay. at least relaxing for most people. We have uh, watching TV on the top left. We Is that have, what he's doing? Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's eating I thought it was chips. like eating chips. <laughs> right, <that's laughs> it, yeah. He's eating chips and watching TV. These are like the best stock images I could find. Gotcha. Uh, top right, we have getting a massage. Bottom left, reading a book. And then bottom right, listening to music. One of these activities has to go away from your life that's, forever. That's, that's super easy, right? So... Uh, even though the top left one with the guy eat, eating the chips and on the TV doesn't look super healthy, that yeah. one that one can stay because yeah. mainly because um, the Oklahoma Sooners play on TV and that's uh -huh. how I watch them uh -huh. play. Right, oh, so awesome. I got to watch. Yeah. I got to watch the sports. You're not giving sooner. up. Not giving up books. Books are books are important. And books are important. I try and read. My goal is to read read two books a month is, is my current goal Dang. i'm a little bit behind this year so i haven't i'm quite i'm a little bit i got some catching up to do there you go. um but uh so that's not going now i assume he's listening to a podcast on the bottom right that's that, yeah he's listening that, that to coffee be, break no yeah, yeah. That's, so, that's, so. that's our number one fan <laughs> so, right there yeah. podcast and audio books I, I, I listen to some music but usually when i'm have headphones on it's either a podcast or an audio book that okay. i'm listening to the top what top right there with the massage gone because um that involves people touching you and that's not, not yeah. like that right? yeah. like, so yeah. i've never i had i had one massage that my wife talked me into one mm -hmm. time in my life and that was the worst thing ever and i'm never going back to have a massage again, so. like deep deep tissue massages no, no. Those that's massages are out Man. not relaxing at all so if oh. one's got to go that's it man what about you i uh I like music too much to get rid of that. You couldn't have got a TV for the and guy I watching love, TV? Dude, I literally just typed <laughs> watching TV. Good. No TVs were featured. It was all just people sitting on couches. And that guy had a funny looking face. So he did. I figured I'd put him <laughs> he on did there. have a funny face. All right, bro. What do you pick it? Uh, I'm getting rid of uh, uh, this. Is, <laughs> it's going to make me seem really, uh, really uh, bad. But I'm getting rid of the books. See, yeah. I just I can't go without the others see and the, um, I, I, you made a very valid point in in my and i'm getting rid of books as well because um my wife always pushes for my kids to read this summer they got 50 bucks if they could read a book in two mm -hmm. weeks and it had to be something at their age level and stuff and they made i spent a lot of money because they read a lot of books but mm -hmm. um i just don't have the attention span for it i will uh be reading and then the next thing i know i'm on you know you ever been driving and the next thing you know you're like 10 miles into it and you have no idea how you got mm -hmm. there that's how i am with i have books. to i have to go like three pages back Cause I'll get, I'll get four or five pages through a book and then I'm like, I get in my head yeah, and I'm like, oh man, what did I just read? So right. you just need more practice. That's what it is. I, yeah. Practice. I do like to read, but if one of those has to go, it's reading because I can always listen to the audio book. Mm, See, but that's cheap. harder though. Listening yeah. to the audio book, I think is harder, especially if it's like a, like a nonfiction book where you, you're trying to learn something or, mm -hmm. or retain, you know, fiction yeah. books, you just kind of have to kind of loosely keep track of a plot, but nonfiction books you kind of have to pay more attention to I like i like audiobooks though because i can multitask and i can like i can work out and listen to an audiobook mm -hmm. and still like retain the information it's like it's hard to hold a book and like you know yeah. lift weights Stay you focused, can't yeah. you can't do that mm -hmm. and i always read in bed too and then i get really tired that's right? what and I fall that's asleep. what you're supposed to do right like read before well, you go what, to bed that works for some people but yeah i i if i read a book usually i don't do it in bed because i can't I won't fall asleep. I'll just keep reading. Depends on the book oh, too. Yeah. If I'm reading a good book, like I read through the Game of Thrones series, it was yeah. an awesome series, but I couldn't put it down. It's too good. See, that's how my wife's been. She's got this new author, Colleen Groover or something like that. It's a lot of the spouse wives and stuff mm -hmm. are reading them. Um, but yeah, she's read like seven of the ladies' books and stuff. So she'll lay yeah. in bed and she's like, I couldn't couldn't stop. You know, our yeah. boss writes books. Yeah, Moon. We gotta, yeah. We yeah. gotta get him on here and talk. I've about read his, some of his books, books. actually. Yeah, oh, pretty good. Mm -hmm. I always thought it's it was they're pretty he heavy science fiction. So yeah, you gotta, you gotta like science fiction. But 
I like yeah, science fiction. I mean, I like Star Wars. So Chad me. probably won't like it because yeah, I probably won't say science fiction since, hater. Uh, yeah, sci-fi's never been my thing. But yeah. I always used to joke with Moon when, I, when he was down south as a sergeant um, that it would be funny if you had some rookie come in and, and Moon fixed his report, told him to fix his report because his narrative was off. He's like, right. "What do you do, old guy? Well, well, I'm kind of an author, yeah. there, guy. Yeah. So a little bit of a writer, right?" When but. he when he gets famous, I've got one of his autographed books, the first one I bought from him. Oh, so no joke. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, he said that's famous. his goal. Yeah. That's cool, though, man. That's cool. He has a word goal. I see it posted on social media sometimes. Like, he I wrote this many words out of my goal for the day or whatever. So That's awesome. That is awesome. I need, that to, is awesome. I need to be more committed to things like that. Right. Let's write a book, Chad. We should. We should. Or make a movie. Probably movie. Probably Coffee better. break the movie. Coffee <laughs> break the movie. <laughs> right. We get, we, you know what we need to do? Is like we need to like put Wayne's like World. a, yeah, a <laughs> GoPro probably. up here for everybody that walks in the door and then they see like how this looks and everybody's mm-hmm. always like, what? Whoa, wow. Or something like that. Mm-hmm. So I think it's kind of Today's just the shirt, the shirt that's making everybody do I mean, that. it is pretty loud. This it's is super loud. This is mm-hmm. gum shirt for uh, the. Oh, um, I know. I know. I know yeah. what it's for. It's just very bright. Yeah, it is very bright. Oh. Uh, I pick pink because I, I like, you know, real men wear pink. So and it's not Wednesday, but yeah. either way. So. Well, we talked about that a while back when, before we started that pink used to be the color for boys right? yeah way back in the you were early telling... 1900s so yeah that's an interesting fact i don't know right. when it went away but i probably learned that from a book there, yeah trevor so you gotta read more books <laughs> yeah. I, need, I need to read books we that's have a, a, i'm gonna read one book a year i'll start there <laughs> and then you know i used to read a lot of books when i was a kid like i loved um uh, goosebumps Oh, Boxcar Children, were awesome. yeah. and then they came out with those Animorphs books. Remember those? Yeah, they you had could, the cool covers. Yeah, or you could them. flip the pages and you could see the person go from the person to whatever morph they were. That was kind of cool. Yeah, but I've never understood why we call it fiction and nonfiction because it always confused me. Why you call it fiction and nonfiction? Yeah, because I, w- I would always have to hesitate, like think, like okay, nonfiction. That means yeah. not fake. So it's real. It's true. Right. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. There like, you go. Yeah, yeah. Fiction means made up, right? Yeah, Non-fiction. just call it all true and false. If I guess if I read more books, I would probably yeah. know that. So. <laughs> I would yeah. point out though that this is called coffee time, and this is and you didn't give me any coffee. Well, this is called coffee break. Oh, coffee! Break. It's a yeah. break from coffee. <laughs> yeah. This is called coffee break. Yes, and you didn't give me any coffee. You didn't have yeah. any coffee, or you probably had coffee earlier today, right? I've had many coffees. So earlier this is today. your break yeah. from coffee. Oh, you didn't you. have any coffee well, no, for this time. This is if DV Sex Crimes is watching this, they're probably going to give us a bunch of crap because uh, they were the ones who started saying that we need to provide coffee to the guests and stuff, and we did that a couple times. Mm-hmm. But then, like this last couple weeks, it's, it's like, just been busy. It's been super busy. But yeah, I made an assumption. So I've got at my office. I've got a half pot of coffee left and had i known there was no coffee here you would already brought brought my own we apologize yeah now we owe you coffee yeah so chrisman was saying we need to change it to lunch break so we can do and bring like food on here yeah Yeah. and then you could have like a restaurant sponsor it you know give different food there you go a local Um, restaurant of some sort yeah i would like that i'd be okay with that yeah especially get some wings or something yeah man. or if there's any coffee roasters watching they can you know they can sponsor if coffee. You are, yeah. If you are a coffee roaster and you want to have your coffee featured on <laughs> yeah, our podcast, right? yeah. email us yeah. at police web. At police web at wichita.gov. So. Do you have any, uh, I know we don't want to take up all your time today. Um, we appreciate you coming on here. But do you have any like parting advice for, for motorists in Wichita? Uh, if there's like one piece of advice you can give people. Well, we talked about, we talked about like road rage, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know, most of the laws we know. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of traffic laws, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So, but most of them we know boil down to be courteous, mm-hmm. right, and drive safely around others. Right? Yeah. So, um, you know, whether you stop behind the stop line or not, and what what does that violate? Yeah. Or you know what what is that violation? Does that constitute? It's far less important to know or have memorized than it is just just be nice to people out yeah. on the road and. You know, like talking about the merging. I mean, it really doesn't slow down your day any for someone to zipper merge right in front of right, you. Right, yeah. So, so even, you know, speeding doesn't really get you anywhere that much faster mm-hmm. um, for the distances that we normally commute. I mean, you're talking seconds. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So, um, but it increases your chances of being in a wreck. And so, yeah. you know, just drive, just drive safely and courteously. And then mm-hmm. kind of the, the traffic laws will, will follow them themselves yeah. so the golden rule right treat others like you want to be treated yeah especially on our roads weather well, have you back once we get closer to inclement weather as well because i know 
those guys and girls and everybody with the uh, four by four trucks think that they can still yeah. go 90 when it's yeah. like icy out. <laughs> yeah. It's not about how fast you can go. It's how fast you can stop. Yeah. yeah. That, right. So exactly. Exactly. So, never friction fails. value on ice is a lot less than the friction value on regular, regular right. roadways. So I hear you. people forget how to drive in inclement weather yeah. every year. Well, Sarge, we appreciate you coming. We know you're super busy and everything. Um, and then we look forward to some more traffic tips and stuff. I know you guys are doing that as well. So, Um, We'll get you back on here soon. All right. All right. We're going to take a refill and uh, we'll be right back. We are back. That was Sergeant Brian Mock with the traffic. (laughs) Dude, that was Sergeant Brian Mock (laughs) (laughs) with the traffic. (laughs) Tyler, er, Tyler, oh my gosh, man, I'm all over the place today. It's all over Monday. Uh, Trevor has got the case of the giggles Uh, already. Just a little bit. So that was Sergeant Brian Mock. Uh, Great dude. Very Very knowledgeable. Very. We could have talked for probably another hour or so about traffic Uh, because there is a lot of rules yeah uh, traffic regulations bro and, and we talked about it before um another thing is like tailgating like that oh that my gets gosh all the time and remember talk, remember that lady, that lady tailgating yeah, us on kellogg on oh my gosh i still wake up in the middle of the night angry yeah. right about that well we can get you oh. to impact and get you scheduled to talk to somebody <laughs> i need to that, talk to somebody <laughs> But yeah, just slow down. I mean, the biggest thing is you want to have that two to three second reaction. So it's all about how quick you can stop as opposed to how quick you can get there, like uh, yep. um, Sergeant Mock said. So you got to um, be prepared for anything. Yeah. And you got to be ready to stop. Yeah. And ready to. You know what gets me too is um, so my daughter plays <laughs> competitive softball and even my son plays competitive baseball. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we go to some of these events, the speed that parents drive in parking lots it's just insane to me. Yeah. Like some of them are like 15 miles an hour does not seem fast when you're on mm-hmm. a 40 mile an hour roadway. But when right. you're in a parking lot, 15 is fast. So, oh. yeah, go ahead. You know, the weird thing about parking lots is they're kind of like a uh, free for all. Yeah. Like the rules really don't apply yeah. there because we can't really enforce anything other yeah. than DUI and handicap yeah. parking. So people people get mad all the time about people like cutting people off in parking lots mm-hmm. or not giving people the right of way. But there's really no. Or even if like accidents. Right? Yeah. You backing up, they backing up, crash. Yeah. Right. We're not going to we're not going to do a case on that. Yeah. It's a private property accident. That's yeah. not even an actual mm-hmm. motor vehicle collision. But. Yeah. We don't make the rules, folks. We right. just, uh, we just, uh, you know, enforce, enforce the them. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of enforcement. Yes. Uh, there's, there's a unit in our traffic division, the motorcycles mm-hmm. uh, that are, that are specialized in enforcing traffic. And I have a fun fact today Is about this the motorcycles. Fun fact? Yes. Heck it's yeah. WPD fun fact today. Uh, so the motor, the motors unit has been around since 2018. Okay. It's still pretty new. Yes. Uh, they did have a motors unit back in the day, but uh, they got rid of it in 2001. Um, and prior to now, the motorcycles were Kawasaki models. Okay. Uh, but now the motorcycles we use are Harley Davidson electric glide motorcycles. Oh. They've got 1800, 1,800 horsepower, Chad. That's a lot. Imagine. Yeah, why would you want 1,800 horses? Like that's Honestly, a lot of horses. That's a ranch, dude. Yeah, that's a ranch. Yeah. That's, not, that's not just <laughs> yeah. a vehicle. That's a yeah. ranch. That's so. a lot of. That's a lot. Of, are we talking about like Clydesdale horses? Or? Oh, is it a ranch or a stable? Wouldn't it be a ranch? Do you ranch horses or, or do, you do you ranch? I don't know. Cows. That's a very very fun. Or yeah. do you ranch dressing? Mm. No one knows. <laughs> yeah, right. No one knows the answer to these questions. Oh. So yeah, so they've only been back four years, <clears throat> um, and the unit's significantly big, right? I think at least what. Eight, six to eight. I don't remember the exact count. There's, there's a, there's a few. And if you follow the Wichita Bad Drivers Facebook page, they'll tell you where they're at. Yes, they will. They'll tell you. Two point oh. Yeah, two point oh. Two Which I, I, I'd like to talk to whoever owns that page or manages that for a second. Um, why did you disable us from commenting? (laughs) I just want to know. I think it's probably because the after we, if we make a comment, um. 
they get a slew of comments after we that. were in the group for like a year yeah we're still in the group we're still in the group we yeah. can see the post but we can't comment and yeah. it makes us sad because we love engaging with our community mm-hmm. and uh, engaging with the other uh, the bad drivers of wichita yeah because we were gonna them. we were gonna post in there the yeah next. we're gonna start posting our traffic tips yeah. in there would have been great because that's we're well, not just want, traffic tips but when, when they're gonna do the traffic enforcements right yeah yeah august 30th they're doing right. one at kellogg and rock but we can't post it in there because we can't make a comment because we do we don't care if you know when yeah. we're going to do traffic enforcement Mm -hmm. um that's the whole thing is is let you know that we're doing traffic enforcement so you don't drive the way that you're driving when you think we're not doing traffic enforcement absolutely you know (sighs) another thing that i i have been i saw on tiktok and i've always wondered it it always brings up arguments and stuff like that or people get confused and everything it's the whole calendar right so when does the day of the week start for you oh that's a good question. So going back to like my kindergarten roots, I always remember like the way the calendar looked there. And t- to me, the the week starts on Sunday. Right. And so the weekend to me is like, it's like a bookend. Yeah. Like the, or like whatever. They, is that, are those bookends yeah. on the bookshelves? Yeah. yeah. So it's like it it's the end of each side of the so week. So it's Sunday to Saturday. Sunday to Saturday. Even though your weekend is always Saturday, Sunday. Correct. It starts Sunday, right? Yeah. So my like, week starts Sunday. So here's the question. Okay. If we're, if it's Friday today, mm-hmm. and I say, "Hey, next Monday, let's do lunch," are you assuming that's two days from today, or yes. are you assuming that's nine days from today? No, that's the next coming Monday. Okay, so if it's Sunday, and I say next Monday, let's do lunch, is it tomorrow or is it eight days from today? It's eight days from today, but that's the very next Monday. But you're saying next Monday because if you're in the week that the day is is that you're talking about uh-huh. then you just say monday or okay. wednesday or friday so, so like today's monday right yeah, i say yeah. hey hey let's get it let's get it lunch friday okay because that's this friday yeah or if i say let's get lunch next friday yes. then that's the next week's friday absolutely you know what i think it's the weekend that kind of throws the the hiccup in it right so if it's wednesday mm-hmm. and i say next monday let's get lunch you don't technically need to say next monday right but i understand you're saying the next coming Monday next because coming we're Monday. still in this week. We're not in next yeah. Monday's week yet. Yeah. But really you would just say Monday. So at what point in your week does <clears throat> next Monday consider yourself? To me, a week when plus? I hear the word next, it's like I jump to the next week mm-hmm. and then I find that day. But the next week for you, you said Sunday starts your week. So Saturday, if I said next Monday, your Saturday is ending your week. The next Monday would be two days from then. Yeah. Cause I haven't started the next week yet. Right, but I asked you what you would expect if I said next Monday. You said you would expect nine days from that day. Did I? I'm pretty sure you did. I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. I just think it's I always stand corrected because be, sometimes, like even like uh, my wife and I will have this debate, or um, I hear other people. You know, like I said, hey man, we're Wednesday. Let's do this, and then Wednesday gets there. Like, oh man, I thought you meant next Wednesday. Like, bro, it was Saturday. Why would I say? Why would you assume it was like 14 no. days from today? That's why anytime somebody says anything like that to me, because I don't know where other people's minds are at mm-hmm. when they say stuff like that. So I confirm a date. Gotcha. I'm like, what date are you talking about? Gotcha. Because I don't know. I just want to bring it up. I, thought I don't that know was, how your brain I, works. I thought that was interesting. Speaking of interesting. So you got some interesting stuff so here. I had our uh, amazing liaisons with the misdemeanor um, municipal, <laughs> or not misdemeanor, municipal court. Um, they printed me out some of the violations and the fines and stuff that you get based Which, on. What's oh, good? Sorry, go ahead. Oh, based on um, traffic violations and stuff, at least for uh, moving violations. And mm-hmm. I think you might have some. So interesting. We said before running a stop, uh, the stop sign on the school bus, right? When a, a school bus is active uh-huh. was like 400 plus dollars and stuff. And I think we, we stand corrected because I'm looking at this and it says fail to stop for a school bus either direction is a fine before court costs of $171.50. Wow. That's pretty that's pretty expensive. And right? before before anybody says anything, we do not set these fines. Yes. Uh, the police department does not set fines. Mm-hmm. It's set by municipal court. So um, if you're looking to talk to somebody about why fines are what they are and how to change them or, or whatnot, yeah. 
we're not the guys to talk to. That's not us. That's not us. That's municipal court. So people always ask when you pull them over for speeding, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, how much is this? Sometimes officer out there might not know, right? Basically, I never knew. I never knew. Never knew. You'd have to call municipal yeah, court or call like, them I on have your no ticket, idea. right? So here's one. If you are traveling 10 over, the fine is $121.50, and then you have court costs. Wow. Uh, oh, no, my bad. This says speeding schedule of fines and court costs. So that's your whole ticket right there. Okay. Yeah. If you're driving 50 miles an hour over the speed limit, $321.50. But you I can are probably you, not just getting a ticket. Yeah, I can assure you, you are if going you're 50, 50 miles 50 an hour over, um, you're going to go to jail for that yeah, one you're, today. You're, you're, you're done. Yeah. You're done. Yeah. You're going to get your, your ticket, You're going to get, and you're going to be yeah, booked in. Your license in for, suspended, probably. Yes. So, but yeah, those are the little... Little fun That's interesting. Them. What is uh? What do you think is one that sticks out to you as like the most interesting? I don't know. You took it from me. Sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me see briefly. Um, let's see. Follow too close. One hundred twenty-one dollars and fifty cents is your ticket for following mm. too close. Um, you will get a ticket for this if you come to an intersection. Um, person in front of you slams on their brakes abruptly, and then you smash into them. Um, you should be, or you most likely would be found at fault for following too close, <coughs> and you could get that citation. Illegal dumping. Ooh. Three hundred and seventy-one dollars and fifty cents. Yes. That. It's a hefty fine. Yeah. And we have that a lot. You know, I went to, when I was CP, we had neighborhood associations that we would go to. And a lot of people would complain that we had, they had uh, illegal dumping going on. Too, oh yeah. So. It's, it's yeah. Certain areas of town, people just like, somebody keeps dumping mattresses under a bridge near my house. Really? And uh, yeah, that's annoying. Yeah. It's not bad. Those are like 20 bucks, I think, which is take to the landfill. And yeah, it's it's not expensive. It's not um, 300 and plus dollars worth of a fine. That's right. for sure. It's way cheaper than the fine for illegal dumping. If I catch you dumping under my bridge. Like dumping trash. Dumping trash, <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, anything, really. Oh. <laughs> you shouldn't be dumping. So that's very interesting, though, man. We really enjoyed Sart and Mock being on the show. Um, lots of great traffic tips and stuff. Please pay attention to all of our social media <coughs> um, platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. We're getting TikTok. good on that tickety talk. Um, and we're going to go out today and get some photos of uh, our school resource officers. School started back today. Yes, school's um, back in session. Yep. So we're going to end the podcast and go take some photos of your SROs. If you got a favorite SRO, your favorite school, shout them out in the comments. Um, Cause we got a SRO Myers did one, uh, a TikTok. So go Falcons and send your questions to police web at wichita.gov. Yeah. We had a question. I almost forgot. Do you have one? Yeah. Do you want to answer? Yeah, it? go ahead. So the time. question uh, was, if you could drive any vehicle as a police vehicle, which vehicle would you choose? So in our fleet now or just anything? I'm going to say, well, we'll do two parts. We'll do any any vehicle at all at and all. then any vehicle that's currently in our in our fleet. I'm probably taking vehicles. like a, a, a big pickup truck, like, pickup a, big, truck? like a quad cab pickup the truck. Gas mileage, though. Uh, um, I mean, I don't pay the gas. Well, you know yeah, what I mean? But but yeah if you're talking about you now we have to think about logistics and well, gas i mean and i'm stuff. just what saying kind of question is this trevor like so what about in our current fleet in our current fleet man i like the tahoe in the tahoe mm-hmm. i'm not a big tahoe fan no no current fleet i'm going with the charger yeah all day every day you see some of Give those me that v8 charger mm. yeah it's got you some, see some get of up the and go. agencies across america that um have like Smart cars and stuff like Priuses and everything. Yeah, no, 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 not yeah. for me. Yeah, well, my, my big beyond ain't getting. Well, that. where are we gonna charge them? That yeah, you imagine that the Applebee's at Forty Seventh and Broadway, right? They got Tesla chargers. I'm sure, there. like you'd have to put them at the departments or something like if that. If I could have any any car in the world, though, probably a uh, Aston Martin DB12 for a police car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? Nah, man. Get it, get it tricked out like James Bond with some like uh, Gatling guns. You're gonna fit an MDT in there, the computer. Yeah, you're gonna fit all that in there. James Bond did it. Did he? He had oil slicks and and ejector seats and everything. Ejector <laughs> seats. One of my favorite movies is um, the uh, oh my god, the Paul. It's Walker not Star film. Wars. No, I know no, that. No, Fast and sure. Furious. Fast and Furious. The second one. Uh, Tyrese, cool dude. Um, he's his favorite. My favorite line from him is, uh, they have an ejecto seat and he's or ejector seat. Ejecto seat. Cause like that's, <laughs> that's my, a good, that's my favorite one. That's a great, so, great line. But anyway, man, look, All forward. Right. To, we're going to wrap it up yep. next week. We'll look forward to seeing y'all. Um, please like share, subscribe, send in um, your questions, and send in your questions to police web at wichita.gov, but we'll see y'all later. Peace. Bye.